Hey everybody. Hey everybody, I hope you have a well paying day. It's Lauren DeLuca here. And Shasta. Shasta Ray. We are here today to discuss the national pain strategy. Um, and before we get into that, I kind of wanted to do just a little disclaimer. Um, as Shasta always says, this is to the best of our knowledge, to the best of our ability. And I actually wanted to add a little bit into that is that this is going to be a very hard hitting uh, video, likely extremely controversial. We expect that there is going to be potentially um, some serious pushback in what we're about to say. But um, what we are about to say is the actual truth. It is factual. It is all um, backed up with documentation. We will be um, dropping some links below with the um, with the documents that prove everything that we're stating. And um, and any further ado, Shasta, take it away. All right. So as you guys know. Since Lauren and I did Violation of a Nation, it's been about a year. And we have, since that time, substantiated our findings in that report. Subsequently, we have noticed that there have been statements made online that there are some differences of opinion about what's going on. Since the findings of the NIH that we reported, we believed that that was going to be what solidified violation of a nation when we were able to show the community that, in fact, the researchers sat around a, a meeting at some point and the notes were taken from this meeting. And within those meeting notes, it clearly stated that they knew people were going to have a really hard time Either. with the fact that they were going to implement the study. The study was going to entail having to implement a strategy, which was the national pain strategy. As a part of implementing the national pain strategy, the CDC guidelines were published. Now, since we published that report, Lauren and I, about the NIH solidifying the fact that that's what happened, there were a few people in the community that basically came up out of nowhere trying to cast doubt upon our work. We respect the fact that people have questions. We respect the fact that people want to come to us and talk about our findings. And maybe things are not evident on the surface, but that's why we always provide documentation. The one thing Lauren and I noticed was that it's always the same little group of people that come trying to cast doubt, mm -hmm. saying that you know they disagree with our findings, but when we provided documentation of these findings, it's all there for you to look for yourself. So exactly. what, what I believe that they do to us, Lauren, is that they're counting on people in the community not looking at the citations, not yes. looking at the supporting documentation.
these individuals, and you know, we're not going to name names, so please don't ask in the comments. Right. We're not trying to start an explosion on the internet. Um, but what we're trying to say is, there are certain individuals within this community, online, on the Twitter advocate, Facebook advocate community, that um, put themselves as leaders of this um, community to try to help fight back. And when you actually look at their actual messaging, they're not fighting back for access to opioids. Yeah. They're actually trying to, it seems like when we put out violation of a nation, we actually got a lot of direct messages and, and like just gossip that went around the internet. And leaders actually had called our report hysteria. They had called it conspiracy. They had also stated, there was one group that actually had stated that they were gonna blast flyers all over the internet to try to take down our report and make sure that it basically never got any traction within the community. Right. And these are people that put themselves out as leaders. Right. Some of them are actually clinical researchers that are very well known. And given that Shasta and I have been able to backtrack into this and find all this information, and that these individuals work with NIH, work with Health and Human Services, um, you know, the possibility of them not being aware that this was a intentional strategy. And when I say this, I'm referring to the national pain strategy and the issuance of the CDC guidelines. For them to state that they didn't know, I'm sorry, is a bold-faced lie. It is. Some of these people, we see them at the meetings. Hey, I'm going to name drop here. Um, these are the individuals within our community that we have discovered that are at these meetings. So they cannot claim ignorance on this. Right. We have... Cindy Steinberg from U.S. Pain Foundation. She's been sitting here. The federal committee that oversees this since day one. She's been fully apprised of this. Um, Sean Mackey from Stanford, also fully apprised of this. Oh, yeah. um, Lynn Webster, also fully apprised of this. And in looking at the federal pain strategy and the national pain strategy, when you look at the actual work groups, we have here um, several members from Physicians for Responsible Opioid Prescribing. But right. We have right. David Taubin, um, um, who else? We have Michael Von Korf. Roger Chow. Shasta that we had seen recently where someone had stated that the national pain strategy um, was blindsided by the CDC guidelines. But yeah. within this report that we're going to be publishing, it states right here that the CDC guidelines will be more effective when they are linked to the national pain strategy. That's right. So the CDC guidelines were not this rogue thing that blindsided the researchers. Right. In fact, the same people sat on both committees. So right. this was actually, the CDC guidelines are a result of the national pain strategy. They were phase one. That's Let's right. roll out the CDC guidelines, start taking away the opioids to get people off of it so that we can put them into the alternative treatments and take their medicine. And What they did is they really psyched out the public by saying, well, the CDC, we didn't know, we didn't know. Right. But we have this here to save you. And Kaladi, Kaladi, the same Kaladi. Thing. Now, Kaladi's not a nice guy. I'm not standing no, up. No, that's a great but, distraction. But he is the distraction piece of this whole puzzle. And anytime you see somebody yes. like Lauren and I producing something like this, where we're telling you, this is from the IPRCC. This is the national pain strategy. The CDC guidelines are part of the national pain strategy. And they say, no, but look. 
go look at the guidelines, go look at Kalani, that is somebody you need to take a look at. Yeah, and Thank then they'll bring up, oh, well, there were guidelines in Washington in 2007. They'll yeah. bring up, oh, well, you just, they'll, they'll stop bringing up buprenorphine out of nowhere when it's not even being discussed. These right. are all right. intentional distraction tactics right. to keep the community focused on the wrong thing. Exactly. Or it's, it's, and that's not conspiracy. No. That's not, you know, any of that. That's just basic business. Right. I mean, this is, this is strategy. This is billions of dollars trillions probably they're not going to just let this go that easily no 